Welcome everybody and thank you for joining me wherever you may be and whenever you're listening to this. My name's David Heaney, I'm a social scientist and I'm going to talk to you today about gaining ground and uh, specifically some case studies that I undertook in Highland and Murray. Gaining ground is a Scottish crafting federation project funded through Highland and Murray Leader. It aimed to build capacity and develop new skills for crofters, smallholders, to, on, to consider the option of green care. And we examined voluntary and business models associated with that. The Scottish, Scottish Crofting Federation held a series of events in Highland and Murray through 2019-20, and this is the final one of these. Um, and because of COVID-19, we're trying to do this virtually. Hope it works. Um, the project assessed the interest in the area, provided opportunities for learning journeys for crofters, promoted and disseminated information about social crofting, and developed relevant fact sheets. We also considered a format for a new crofting, social crofting network. Um, just something about the wording. Uh, I've heard this called social farming, social crofting, care farming, green farming. Today I'm opting for social crofting, but I mean all of those things. Uh, the, the people who are recipients of this um, are called clients, placements, service users, participants, volunteers. What they receive um, is care, support, education, learning, and therapy. I'll be talking about care today. And sometimes today when I use crofters, I also mean farmers and smallholders, but um, I'm just looking for shorthand. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like to say is that the evidence appears that this works elsewhere. It's been established in Holland for many years where the where the farmers get paid directly. It's worked in Norway, Sweden, we've seen models in Ireland and England developing. Um, and it's clear that the Croft small holding farm setting has many benefits for clients, um, the fresh air and uh, the ability to work. But these benefits are difficult to directly measure. And I think it was summed up by someone in, in this project that said to me, I just need to see the smile on a face to know this works. Now, how do you measure a smile? That's why looking for hard evidence is problematic. Um, and we can often be faced with, more so than maybe some other countries, the, the question um, along the lines of, can you make it cost neutral for us? Which is, and again, another quote from someone else in the study. The answer to that question is no, we can't. Um, anyway, um, what did I do? Um, I undertook case studies in five different sites, um, visited the sites when appropriate and when I was able to, um, undertook interviews and in some cases, a little bit of participation just to get a feel for uh, what was going on. Um, Basically, ask crofters lots of questions. This was really interesting and quite a lot of fun. And I hope that that comes across in what I have to say today. There are also discussions at Greater, at Gaining Ground events where I listened in and spoke to people about what they thought about the whole idea. I'm an outsider um, and uh, didn't know much, too much about crofting up till maybe. Uh, 18 months or so ago, so I've learned a lot. And in conducting these case studies, um, seeing people from a range of diverse backgrounds, some of whom were new entrants to crofting and had non-crofting backgrounds, but did bring relevant experience in health or social care, education or science. And I thought that was interesting. Um, the crofts themselves, I, when I thought about what I'd seen when I'd done the case studies, realized that in some places, well, it's really care that's the main purpose of the enterprise. 
um, and the the croft is a setting in which that care takes place, um, and it's a very interesting setting for care to take place, and I suppose breaks down some uh, traditional barriers there. Um, in other places, uh, the the care that that happens is an integral part of the croft. It's part of what the croft does. That's also that's also been interesting. In some cases, it's just a small part of the croft, but something that's evolved, and oh, and and that that can be that it's just a byproduct of what's happening anyway. And it, um, it, these are all different ways in which crofters have uh, developed this kind of approach. What I'm going to do is take you through a summary of the case studies that I did. And I've tried to identify the main characteristics of the sites that I visited. I suppose some of you can have some fun trying to guess where these places are, I'm sure some of you will. Um, but what, I, what I'm interested in is the characteristics that, that, that uh, these, these places have, have and, and what we can learn from them. So the first site, um, that I'll talk about, um, it generates income through local authority funded clients coming to the site. And these clients have a variety of needs, mainly adults, and um, they come along. Um, the, at the site, there's, ex there, there's extensive experience of the social care sector, which has enabled them to um, to uh, win these contracts with clients. And the actual site itself is a large enterprise with a garden. It's not a farm. This is like a set of clues, isn't it? <laughs> um, anyway, the clients attend one day a week and fit into uh, a set of wider activities that happen on the site. And what I learned was that the clients are there to help the to grow the food, to tend to the garden. And then they share lunch with a group of other people who are um, on the site. And the site on uh, the, the, the case study site, um, the clients are monitored um, to establish benefits so that, they on, that, so that the site understands uh, uh, what's happening. So this is very much, um, a site where it comes from social care and, and is moving into um, delivering services uh, on, in a farming environment. Completely differently, here come, the second case study comes from a completely different angle. Uh, what we have here is an established arable farm and indeed an established care farm. The person running the care farm has been working for 12 years previously, had a nursing background, so understands the health service. However, that person told me that care farming that happens on, on the site does not contribute significantly to overall farm income. I asked, do the clients contribute? And uh, the response I got was that they're a help around the place. They maybe do jobs that otherwise somebody else would have had to do, and um, and so they, there there is a there's a beneficial um, uh, there's a benefit for the farm in that kind of way. One of the things we talked about quite a lot at this case study was that the benefit system itself is a barrier for clients to progress because of the, the clients here are often. And um, people looking to uh, uh, return to work, and and so it just the, the the feeling was that the it's difficult for them to move out of the benefit system and back into employment. Something we need to think about there. And we also talk quite a lot about how difficult it is to sustain care farming without proper funding. It really is difficult for people unless they really have wanted to do it. And the person involved had had a lot, lot of uh, time for what, what they'd done and 
enjoyed it a lot. But in terms of a viable prospect, it probably wasn't something that um, many people would want to do. The third case study site, different again. Um, this was a success. This is a successful and innovative small holding. Uh, really interesting. Um, the person that's leading this that I spoke to has got a crafting background, but also a business background. And I think you could see those two things um, together when uh, you looked at the, at the site um, with traditional values and traditional farming being seen as, um, uh, as important. Um, and the community is placed at the heart of everything in the farm and in, in the small holding with a carefully planned business model. Um, and that has led over the years to lots of volunteer activities, lots of educational activities and lots of fun activities for children and for adults of a, with a range, with a range of uh, issues. Um, so the way that things are done on this site is that the social aspect does not contribute directly to farm income. They have avoided getting and getting, looking for contracts from um, education or from health. It's a volunteer activity that they have undertaken. But the, what they've done with their community facing activity is look to that as a way of adding sales in local markets. So that is the way that they have very carefully placed the community at the heart of what they do. In some degrees, this next case study site is similar. The Croft produces vegetable and meat products direct to the customer. And they changed their, their original business model just because it was proving difficult to be viable as it stood. And um, because of difficulties, um, decided that they would bring volunteers to come in to help one day a week. And that's just worked. Wasn't planned, particularly, I don't think. But it was a solution that, that, that was found to work. Those volunteers are regular, sustainable. The site has never advertised for them. But just by word of mouth, these people have begun to contribute to the enterprise by coming every week. And they gain something from it. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a moment or two. Um, and what those the people in the farm are doing is contribution to, to growing and producing vegetable boxes. And um, uh, again, there's no contracts. Um, this is entirely a voluntary exercise. And I participated by uh, uh, spending an afternoon working with the other people who are volunteers. And they ask me more questions than I ask them, actually. It's very interesting what they were getting from it. And really, I think this, this case study site decided that what they wanted to do with their craft was make a living from it. And they weren't necessarily making a profit from their, um, from their enterprise. Um, and when they made that decision, the whole, the whole thing seemed to start to work for them very well. The fifth case study site is a site where things have been more difficult. It was new, a new small holding, and the craft was to be the, the care, social craft was to be the primary income for the site. There was a lot of planning went into the model. The person involved, again, had a health background, but they really struggled to establish themselves once they set up. And despite the fact that they thought they would get contracts, they found these contracts were not forth, forthcoming. Um, and that whilst the 
the idea was approved of at a policy level and approved that on the front lines. The, the difficulty was getting um, middle managers to agree to contracts that would then go outside um, the health service and be delivered in this site. The low population density may have also added to those difficulties. And um, here we have a, a case study where what was really a good idea, well thought out, has struggled. It's a lot more difficult than it should be. And the final um, site, it wasn't actually a case study that I uh, was formerly in, in the project, but it was a site I knew, so I thought it was worth including. And again, um, this is very much like the first site um, where these are educational activities that are on a croft. Um, I hope you can't hear a dog barking in the background because I can't. Um, just always picks the right moment to bark. But that's one of the perils of uh, uh, <laughs> working in this way. Anyway, um, where was I? Educational activities on a croft as a site with someone who's experienced in education and was able to understand how to get contracts through education and health services. This is a site that's been established and working for years and is well placed in bigger, near to bigger populations. It's proved to be a business model that seems to be working well. And I think it's just interesting to, to pick on this and add this one in because it adds to my story, I think. Those are the six case studies and I had a really interesting time speaking to all these people. I'm gonna draw some thoughts from it. The first thought is that there are a number of barriers that are here that prevent social crafting from growing in the way that we might like to see it. And people involved at hard lessons, which um, I tried to summarize here. One of the hard lessons is overcoming bureaucracy. Um, and I think that was probably pretty common amongst um, all the sites I visited. Although some people are well able to uh, deal with this bureaucracy, others less so. Similarly, getting contracts um, in some cases proved, as you've heard, more difficult than others. And there's a difference in this idea about care packages between what the policy is and what the reality is in the ground. And a number of respondents in this study told me about that. Um, then there was difficulties in deciding the business model and then it not working. That, that happened at least two sites I can think of. And really then, how do you deal with that and, um, uh, ch and change what you're doing into something else? And one of the ways that that happened and one of the sites as I mentioned was thinking less about making profit and more about making a living. And then in that case, things began to slot into place. Um, and I, I've left a word out here, but anyway, social enterprise model was one that somebody looked at in great depth and decided it was not appropriate in, 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 the, in the case of uh, crafting and something that they felt they might like to have done, but the regulations didn't fit. So here's a quote from that case study that I mentioned. I had the frontline staff. I had the high up strategic staff, all supportive. I missed one vital level, which was the middle management who sign off on the local budget decisions. Those are the people that were maybe saying, can you make this cost neutral? So there's two ways that you can go here. You can start off from social care and move towards the croft. Uh, in some ways, I think this is the easier way to go. Although, can you find some land? It's not necessarily an easy start. Can you get a croft? Um, uh, I'm sure many of you will know that's not easy. Um, can you apply your care skills in the same? And I suppose that's about do you know enough about crofts and crofting to actually deliver care in a in a agricultural setting? And do, do you want to move out of traditional settings for care? Those are the kind of issues that will arise if you try to move from social care and into 
into the outdoors. The other way round, well, the old Irish joke is I wouldn't, if you're asking for directions to a farm, well, I wouldn't start from here. It is difficult. One of the main questions is, do you might want to make a living from this? Because it, a number of respondents have said, this is not something that you will make a lot of money from. So, but do you want to diversify? And if you do, are you determined you want to deliver social care in a farm setting? Um, this is this is key. If you don't want, if you really don't want to do it, then it's difficult. And do you want to get involved in contracting with NHS and social care? Do you have the experience to do that? Do you know that it's actually going to work? And I think that's a key issue for crofters. A quote from another one of the case studies is, we began with this naive ideal that we would pay everyone the living wage, but it soon became apparent that neither me or anyone else was making anything like the living wage. And uh, then I'm going to turn to overcoming concerns about having volunteers, because um, there, there, were, there were concerns about having um, not paying people, I suppose, is at the core of this. And is that OK? Well, what I think is that it can be sustainable. But there has to be an experience for the volunteer. And there has to be a reward for them. Not a monetary reward, but some other kind of reward. My own personal experience was that on a sunny day, picking cucumbers for an afternoon makes you feel great. And um, maybe make lots of other people feel great who do the kind of work that I do sitting in front of a computer. So it was a good day and taking them home and eating them was even better. The reward for voluntary participation can be learning. And what I saw as well is it can be good company and it can make you f improve your self-worth. So I think these things are all worth considering um, around uh, volunteers, but they, you basically need to treat them as good as you would treat paid employees uh, to keep them on board. So what do I think the benefits are? I've got four perspectives here. What I observed was that um, social crafting can improve the well-being of crafters themselves, that working as a team can combat isolation. So for example, the crofter that had the volunteers coming in once a week would think through and, and, and save up team activities for the day that the, that the volunteers would um, turn up. Um, secondly, the clients themselves um, improves their well-being, improves their physical health, improves their mental health, their self-worth, their confidence, um, their social contact, and provides supports for families. Um, if, uh, if the client is there for the day, it means the families get a break. All of these things um, is what you see when this happens. There's community well-being as well, because it brings agriculture closer to communities, which I think is important. And, uh, also, a societal well-being related to that as agriculture can be at the centre of better ways of living. And someone said, if you want to do it, you should just go ahead. You won't make much money, but you should just do it. Um, I've tried to map this, uh, thinking about the sites that I looked at, and I hope this makes sense. But if you look on the y-axis here, I've got the volunteer model, and then moving up towards a contract model. And if they then look across the x-axis, as it were, we've got places that are crofts through to places that are primarily social care. And I put a dot where I think each of our, my case studies are. So we've got two, um, two sites down in the bottom left-hand corner that have got a volunteer type approach, very much are crofts and are, may move towards a 
more social care kind of environment, but are probably quite happy where they are now. And that, if that model works, that's fine. We don't mind. Then if we go up and I'll go across, we've got the, the Croft who, um, uh, who have got a, a contracts in place and they are very much a, a working farm as it were. And um, they've moved a little towards the social care model. Um, then there's the site that maybe didn't work so well, but it was halfway between being a croft and a social care site. And um, then the two sites, one of which very much was a croft, but, the, but on this, the, the social care was taking place on that croft as a setting. And then finally, um, the, uh, the site where really was a social care environment in an outdoor kind of garden um, where, where the clients were getting, um, were getting the experience of be working, working in, in, in the outdoors. What I think is interesting is that we really want to get to them in somewhere in the middle here and it, we haven't as yet got to that. I hope that makes sense. It kind of, I, I'll work on that and uh, if I, I'll be, get feedback from it and see if I can, if it's getting across the, the, the kind of typologies that I think are out there. Oh, much more simply, I think what I learned was one, co was one common thing is that all these people were no matter where they started from and where they've ended up are all trying to do exactly what I think we need to do as a society. And it did strike me that they're all undervalued. And uh, that leads me to my recommendations for policy makers. There's an, I think there's a real need to make entry into social crafting easier. There's space for this and it's not being used. There are people who want to do it and find it too difficult. And I think policy makers need to think about things on the small scale because um, this is where the real, the real benefits I think are of doing this, um, uh, and they need to find mechanisms to reward crofters directly for this. And I think that's the lesson I heard from from several people: is if we paid the crofters directly for delivering these kinds of services, that would be better than them trying to get contracts from uh, large organisations. So we need to turn the rhetoric that's around about policy into reality. And if this grabs some attention, then um, Scotland needs to catch up with England, um, where care farming is further advanced. Hope that gets across. Um, secondly, for crafting organizations, I think we need, they need to find mechanisms to link the demand for farm-based therapy to the desire to incorporate social elements into crofts and small holdings. That's uh, easy to say, but I wonder if this is something that, uh, that, that organizations could do. And Scottish Crofting Federation, for example, could act as brokerage for, for contracts because it's so difficult to, um, to try to get contracts if you've got no experience of the ways that health and social care contracts work. I think crafting organizations should be lobbying policy makers to get them to do some of the things that I've just said. And we do need to consider the impact that Brexit, COVID-19 in particular might have. Um, I'll come back to that in a moment. The recommendations for crofters is, I think, I would say, consider carefully whether the model that you think uh, you want to do fits into your business. It may, and it may not. Um, and don't, I think, start with lower expectations. And someone said, you should really do this. If you, if you want to do it, you should do it because there will be real benefits to you, but they may not be financial. One thing that, I wondered was whether if, if crofters were interested in taking this on, maybe the first step is to take on volunteers on their 
on their on their craft as a way of uh, stepping in to this before taking a plunge to look for contracts, etc. Um, I, I, I've seen this work work well, and um, uh, perhaps that's the way to do it. And we're we're in difficult times at the moment, even from the nature of this um, presentation. Um, but I do wonder if actually now is the time. There's a lot of people who are thinking very differently about their lives. And I wonder if it would be good to be trying to get people to uh, take the benefits of uh, working on a craft um, at this moment. Um, just my thoughts, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Um, and thank you for listening. Um, you'll be able to ask me questions on Wednesday and we can have a chat then. Hopefully the chat works so that we have the interaction which is required to kind of really understand where we may be going next. So thank you.